Welcome everybody, it's very nice to see you all. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we have very, uh, something very special for you. First, uh, we have Radha Krishnas, and then we have something even more special on the video, <laughs> if it's possible. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Howdy ball, everyone. Namaste. Thank you so much for coming, like Yadu said. Isn't this cool? Isn't this just amazing, Kirtan? It's just, it blows my mind that um, when I first came across it, I hated it. I didn't like it at all, this chanting of these mantras in this way. And funnily enough, I was talking to a, a friend last night. We had a, we had a program here last night. It was, um, we'd arranged to have a, a full moon beach kirtan up in Broad Beach. And um, I'm sure the full moon was there, but we couldn't, there was no way of seeing it and it was raining. So we, we came here instead and it was just packed to the rafters. And um, so we had a, a wonderful chant for about two and a half hours last night. And I was talking to a friend afterwards, a new, a new friend, and um, he was saying the same thing. He, he was saying he came to our previous yoga center at Nobby's Beach some, like, some years back, and he came to a couple of kirtans and just didn't like it. Like he just didn't feel comfortable, just didn't like it. He came back a second time and it was confirmed he didn't like it. So, um, so he didn't come back. Um, and then I think some years passed, I'm not sure exactly the timeline, and he was going through a tough time uh, in his life and was being kind of overwhelmed by anxiety and, and just, he said he made a, that night he knew he had to do something to get out of the house because his mind was just driving him crazy, he was feeling depressed and so he said he had a choice of either going to the pub and getting smashed, that was one option, and I'm sure many of us have tried that option of dealing with things. But for some reason or other, he said, it came into his mind to go to that weird stuff at, Nobby, at the Nobby Beach Yoga Center. He, he, he didn't know why, but it just came into his mind that maybe I'll go there. And he did. Now you've got to beat him off with a stick. He comes to more chance than I do. Because <laughs> he found, as I did, obviously I don't hate kirtan now. But initially I was not very attracted to it. 
And he said the same thing. What is it? He said, there's something special that I didn't first realize about this chanting of these names, these mantras. He said, it's just made his life so much better in every single way. So this is actually the case. Anyway, I'm not supposed to give a long talk tonight, sorry. So today we are celebrating a very auspicious and holy day, is the proper word to use, <clears throat> called Gor Ponyama. Gor Ponyama is the celebration, the observance of the appearance in this world of a great transcendental personality around 530-odd years ago in India called Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So some of you who maybe have been coming for a while, you notice in the beginning of our kirtan, we normally chant a mantra, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimate Siddha Swarupananda Paramahamsa Itinami Ne. So this Sanskrit prayer or mantra is that we are paying respects to our spiritual teacher who has very kindly given us this process of meditation and self-realization. So this is why we're chanting this mantra first out of respect and gratitude to our spiritual teachers in our spiritual lineage. Then we chant another mantra that's a little longer. Vajya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Shivas Adi Go Bhakta Vrindam. So this second mantra, we are actually, again, expressing our gratitude, our thanks um, to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates, his, uh, his associates or assistants who came also 530 odd years ago. So we're, we're setting the scene, so to speak, so that we will be able to immerse ourselves and enter into the chanting of the different names of the Supreme. You know, like, and, well, no, I won't talk too long on that. Before we chant, you know, the Maha Mantra, for instance, the names of Krishna. So there is a deep ocean of spiritual love contained in these mantras, these names of the Supreme. So by chanting Nama Om and Bhaja Shri, this actually gives us, it's the key to opening the door, so to speak, into this ocean of spiritual love, which we are always looking for. That's what everyone is looking for. Does anyone here look for hate? Do you get out of bed in the morning and go, yeah, I'm just going to hate. I just, and, I, and I hope people hate me. Does anyone do that? Ah, all intelligent people. No, no one does that. We're looking for love. This is the nature of the soul. This is the nature of the living being is to love and to be loved. And to experience perfect love. Not conditional love. You know, not that you love me as long as I'm young and pretty or as long as I'm, you know, old and have a lot of money or whatever the other attributes that, that people find attractive. We're looking for unconditional love, no matter what. To be loved even when I'm, you know, not, not traveling so well. But that's... That's what we're all looking for, because it is the nature of the soul. And that love is real. The reason we desire it is because it's real. It exists. And it exists in our eternal relationship with the supreme beloved, Krishna or God. But how do we access, how do we enter into that world of spiritual love, that world of union with the supreme, with the divine soul? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is understood through the sacred yoga texts, the Vedas, to be an avatar of Krishna or the Supreme Soul. Avatar means the descent of the Supreme. It's not a movie. It's actually, the word is a Sanskrit word, which means the descent of the divine, the Supreme Soul, the Supreme Person to this world. So why does the Supreme Person come to this world? out of compassion, out of love, to invite us back home to our eternal place of love. 
in, in all spiritual traditions, including yoga, the Vedas, there are many, many, many different yogic practices. Ashtanga yoga, you know, Kundalini yoga, all kinds of things. Silent meditation, pranayam, breath work, as we call it in the modern times. Austerities, you know, living in a cave. So many different things are there for a person who wants to access this spiritual kingdom or self-realization, enlightenment. Very difficult. All these paths are very difficult, basically impossible. Not just for the average person, even for the extraordinary person to actually achieve success in these different forms of meditation is virtually impossible in this particular modern time where our body gives us so much hassle, our mind is constantly causing us grief and trouble and worry. We just don't have the time or the ability to apply these very difficult yogic or meditation practices. So Sri Chaitanya and his associates have come out of compassion and love to give to all living beings, not just human beings, not just living beings from a particular race, a particular tradition or a particular spiritual religious path or tradition, but to all living beings who are actually part of the Supreme Soul. So not only not just Indians or just Australians or Chinese, or, but also not just human, but all living beings who are actually part of the Supreme. And this method is Harinama. Harinama Sankirtan is the Sanskrit word for it. Hari means the Supreme Soul. It's a name for God, Hari. Hari Nama, the English word name, comes from the Sanskrit Nama. Hari Nama, so name of the Supreme, Sank Kirtan. This is described as the, the Dharma, the spiritual practice which we can achieve success in in this age, this modern age of chaos of fighting, of disagreements, of all the stuff that we unfortunately know too well all about. So of this Hari Nama Sankirtan, Sankirtan, Sangha, the, the word Sankirtan comes from Sangha, and Sangha means a community, a group of people. In English, like a congregation. Kirtan means the chanting of sacred mantras or the chanting of the holy names of the divine. So the Yuga Dharma, the way to achieve spiritual perfection, the way to remove all of the unwanted things from our hearts, the worries, problems, troubles, misconceptions, misidentification of the body as being myself, all of these things which cause so much pain and grief for all of us, these can be easily removed and we can come onto the platform of spiritual love to Harinama Sankirtan. So that means the congregational chanting of the names of Hari or the Supreme Soul. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Chaitanya, came to inaugurate or to start this movement which began in one place in India, 538, I think it is, years ago. And here we are, 538 years later, in this little suburb of this little part of Australia, in this little part of the globe, in this small, tiny planet on this universe, of which there are many. And here we are, engaging in Harinama Sankirtan, the easiest, most sublime, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, my guru's guru, he said this chanting is the most sublime method to achieve spiritual love. What does sublime mean? It's not a word used very often. Who here regularly uses the word sublime? Who here knows what sublime means? <laughs> Couple, kind of. It means 
It means the most beautiful, the most amazing, the most wonderful, and many other adjectives we could use. So this method of kirtan is the most sublime, the easiest, the most wonderful, the most powerful method of entering into and to dive deep into this ocean of spiritual love which is the nature of the soul. So today we are celebrating Gaur Purnima, which means the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this world 500 odd years ago who inaugurated this. So it is out of love and compassion that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to this world to spread this. So we are hoping that as we are trying to, you will also maybe make this part of your life and you will benefit greatly. And maybe if you're a little bit iffy about, well, um, this is a bit weird, this, I've not really done this before and I'm not sure what this is all about, that's okay. But if somehow or other you practice it regularly, then you'll find, like many of us, it becomes not only very natural, but over the years many people have said this, it feels like I'm coming home. Feels like I'm coming home in my heart. And that's actually a fact. That's actually what is happening. And, and very often also people ask, why is it that I sometimes cry during kirtan? Is it because Radha Krishnadasa's voice is so sweet? And <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd laugh at that. <laughs> I'm okay with it. I've dealt with it many years ago. No, it's Majalila's voice is so sweet. And, but actually even more than that, it is just like someone who has been lost away from their family for many, many unlimited years and have now found their real home again. That's what Kirtan is. So come home. Ye who are weary, come home. This is a beautiful song that we sing at Christmas sometimes. So that's probably enough from me. Thank you very much for putting up with my ramblings most weeks. So it is true, as Yadu Nandana said. Um, so what I would like to do now, what we would like to do now, is actually on this wonderful day, we would like you to hear from the person who is our inspiration in our spiritual journey, our dear spiritual teacher, our guru, dear Gurudev, uh, Srila Siddhas Rupananda Paramahamsa, who is speaking, this is the second part of a, of a talk about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Each one is hard, like it was an hour talk, but I've selected the second half hour to play because in this he is speaking um, specifically about the chanting of the holy names. Not so much about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. He spoke about that in the first part of this talk. But I wanted to play this part so we can actually uh, have a, a nice understanding of the, what the chanting is all about and, and how we should add it to our life and what the outcome of that will be. So my spiritual master is not, he is not self-appointed or anything like that. This, the disciplic line, the spiritual lineage in which we are coming in is also the same spiritual lineage of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we are coming directly in this spiritual lineage from Chaitanya. But this lineage known as the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya, Sampradaya means spiritual lineage, begins with Sri Krishna himself. And this wisdom, these practices, these names are handed down since time immemorial, from the beginning, before time began, through this amazing, unbroken line of uh, self-realized yoga masters or spiritual masters or lovers of Krishna. So, Srila Siddhasrupananda Paramahamsa um, is our dear Gurudev. And we, of course, want you to hear directly from him. So he may also 
touch your heart as he has touched ours and deliver this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So when it is the etiquette in spiritual life, not just yoga, that when we see a spiritual teacher, that we pay our respects. So how we can do that is very simple. This is where in yoga we have you know, this greeting of namaste, where we, we just put our hands either at our heart or here, and we, in humility, say namaste. And this uh, helps to put us in a receptive state of consciousness to hear the spiritual wisdom you know, that will be imparted to us. So if you feel so inclined, you may also, we, you'll see us doing this when we see and hear our spiritual teacher. And then again at the end, after hearing this wisdom, out of gratitude, we also pay our namaste to our teacher. So if you are so inclined, you know, you can also do this, uh, but there is no need. If you don't feel comfortable, there's absolutely no need at all. So, thank you. And then, of course, after that, what do we have? More kirtan with Yadu and all these lovely people. So I'm just going to put down these speakers so that it might be easier. I mean, these uh, microphone stands so it could be easier to see. Thank you very much. Haribo. So today we're going to be reading some of Lord Chaitanya's prayers. Lord Chaitanya, as great a scholar as he was, wrote only eight verses. And these eight verses uh, contain in them the entire absolute truth. They contain bhakti which is beyond salvation. Bhakti means uh, love for God, pure love for God, untainted love for God, untainted, no contamination of self-interest. So this evening we're going to read these a few of these prayers because I'll read a prayer and automatically I'll want to uh, speak on it. So we'll see how far we get. Okay. Glories to the Sri Krishna Samkirtan. Glories to the congregational chanting of the holy names of God which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years and extinguishes the fire of conditional life, of repeated birth and death. This Samkirtan, or chanting movement, is the prime benediction for humanity at large because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon. It is the life of all transcendental knowledge. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss. And it enables us to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious. Here, Chaitanya is making it very clear that in this age of Kali Yuga, the way to become cleansed of all the sinful reactions which cover our hearts and minds all the sinful reactions can be cleansed away by God's names. God is not only all pure, He's all purifying. And the hearing and chanting of God's names has the effect of purifying a person of all past karmic reaction. In other words, a person achieves salvation through the holy name of God. And this is also accepted in the Old Testament, which states in Psalms uh, that uh, our salvation uh, is in your name, O Lord. The name of God 
the names of God. Uh, save us from being caught on the wheel of birth and death. A person is caught on the wheel of birth and death due, his, due to being caught uh, by his or contaminated by sinful reactions. He is forced to take birth in the material world and suffer birth and death because he's contaminated by karmic reaction. The names of God purify a person of this karmic reaction so that the repeated birth and death, uh, this conditional life is extinguished. Then more than that, beyond that, uh, there's another effect, and this other effect is stated here. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss. Uh, it enables us to taste fully, to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious. We are living beings. Parts and parcels of the supreme living being. We are spirit souls, part and parcel of the supreme soul. What nectar is it that we are anxious for, that we need to taste and that we want to taste? If you have a fish and he's out of water, and he's barely gasping, and he's on the side of the, the you know, the, the side of the water there, like, you know, on a, a catwalk, or you ever seen fish on catwalks, or, you know, you see fish on the, you know, in the harbors, you have sometimes fish flapping, you know, on the cement or something, or in mud pond, you see sometimes they're on the mud. What are they anxious for? Huh? Hmm? The water. We are parts and parcels of God, and we belong in the ocean of God. We're anxious for God. God Himself is that nectar for which we are anxious. Love for God is not separate from God. Love for God is God. We are anxious for the nectar of love for God. We want to taste the nectar of love for God. We try to find this nectar in so many things in this world. We try to experience the nectar by having loving relationships with other living beings, other spirit souls. And we think, this is it. You know, like sometimes, usually when a person is not too old in the West, you know, you meet that first girl, that first boy. And for some reason, it just makes your heart go, what's the cliche? Pitter-pat, pitter-pat. <laughs> you know? You know, the, I finally met her. <laughs> you don't do it on purpose. It just happens. And it, because you, you, you haven't experienced before, at least in this life, you see, you're just sort of overwhelmed by it. She isn't this wonderful. You know? You meet that girl and you meet that boy, you say, puppy love. You see, and they're just so, oh, they're so happy. It's, this is just a perverted reflection of the real thing, though, you see. It always ends up a real bitter thing and a real bummer, and I guess that's why, I, that's why only young kids get it. So you get burned out pretty quick after three or four of those things. You see, you start flashing on what they are, you know. And then they just stop coming. But that's really what we're anxious for. You know, why do people go to the beach, for example? We talked about this before, I think. Why do people go to the beach? It's such a miserable place, you know? It's like going to the desert to relax, <laughs> you know, with no clothes on, just a little pair of shorts, and you go out on the desert and just relax, you know? <laughs> you know, getting all sandy and sweaty, and, the, you, you know, you get up and the sand's all stuck in your back, you know? <laughs> And there he goes, oh, for the water. You have to brush the top of, away, you know? Sometimes I'd go swimming, you know? And, you know, I try to wade out as far as I can, brushing my way, you know, through the things floating on the top, that sort of brown sort of, you know, stuff and the, you know, the, you know, the, the, uh, little candy wrappers and, you know what I mean? You just sort of, 
you dive in and try not to take any of it in and you hope that the, you don't get ear infections, you see. They don't go for that. I mean, it'd be more refreshing to go in the shower, just take a cold shower, you know. Even people with swimming pools, you see, go to beaches. If they like the, the beach so much, why don't they make the thing around their swimming pools out of sand? <laughs> Do you ever notice that when people make swimming pools, they don't, you know, they make it, they make it so that there's sand, but there's also cement there to hold it together. <laughs> okay? Why is this? See? Because sand is not really all that nice. It's just a bunch of dead bodies after all. Sand is nothing more than prehistoric bodies. See? Crushed, uh, crushed corpses is really all sand is. It's just a giant... Uh, a beach is nothing more. I mean, I'm sorry, you know, if I <laughs> ruin anything here, but that's, that's really what a beach is. It's just, a, just, you know, it's a very big graveyard, isn't it? I mean, what? I mean, that is what it is. So why did they go to the beach? With the hope that they will be able to taste the nectar of uh, love. They're going to find someone to love. That's why they go to the beach. That's why they go to school. You know? They want to have some nectar. The nectar of loving somebody. And college, same way. It's the same thing in college. You know? Beaches, college, everything. Everybody's always looking, looking. And somebody, they find someone, you know, in college or after college or whatever, and they become in love and they marry. And they fell in love, then they fall out of love. And they divorce, and then they're feeling lonely, a desire for some nectar. So they go not knowing what to do, how to do it. I forgot how to do it. You know, I haven't done this for so long. So they maybe go to a singles bar. What, what sad place. This is a place where everybody comes who wants to meet somebody. What for? Oh, for sex life, yes, but after all, you could have that by yourself. I mean, really. The orgasm's not that big a deal, is it? I mean, it's not really worth that much, is it? I know everybody likes to act like they're not interested in love, but in fact, they are. They want love. They want to love somebody. Maybe they're afraid to love other people. They're afraid to love somebody else. But that's what they want. They want to actually love someone. So, this desire for the nectar of loving someone is a natural, uh, inseparable part of the living being. Buddhist philosophers would have us believe that it's bad and that we should try to kill it or destroy it or void it out. But Chaitanya and the Vedic literatures and the uh, Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament are teaching something different. They're teaching that this love and this need to love someone is a natural part of your very being in the same way that you are eternal. You're eternal by nature. And you're also blissful by nature and you're full of knowledge by nature your, your, your inner core your natural condition not when you're condition, when you're overwhelmed by the influence of material nature ignorance but in this natural state your real normal condition is sat chit ananda sat is eternal eternality chit means knowledge and ananda is bliss blissfulness so blissfulness is the blissfulness of love. Love for God. That is blissful. That is bliss. The sex orgasm is not bliss. Love for the supreme person. This is bliss. And a person gets a little taste of this nectar, but mixed with bitter, bitter lime in this world uh, when they have some loving relationship in this world, when they really love someone in this world. 
But the bliss we're discussing, Ananda, is the bliss of the, the nectar, the taste of love for the Supreme Person. And it's this nectar which we're anxious for. It's this nectar which we need. We can't live without it. We can exist without it because we're eternal already and we're going to exist no matter what. Existing is no problem. But living, that's another thing. The question is not, is there life after death? The question is whether or not there's life after birth. Are people living? You know, Jesus gave that one example once. He was uh, going, speaking to people, and he told this guy, follow me. I forget the exact situation. Anyway, he told the guy to follow him. Come with me. Learn from me. Follow me. And the guy said, I'd like to, but first I've, I've got to go bury my, my father. I, gotta, I can't come. I've got to go bury my father. So Jesus remarked to him, uh, let the dead bury the dead. Let the dead bury the dead. What does it mean? It means that people can appear to be living, but they're dead. They're existing, but they're dead. Why are they dead? Because they don't have ananda. They don't have the bliss of love for God. They're dead. They're not living, they're dead. So, uh, Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya has come to make it possible for us to taste that nectar, to drink fully of that nectar for which we are always anxious. And when he appeared, he went everywhere throughout India chanting God's names. And anyone who heard him saying God's names, immediately they were uh, transported into the realm of love for God. He himself was in the realm of love for God. He is himself drinking that nectar fully and distributing it to everybody. And therefore is described that wherever Chaitanya went, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people were going mad with love for God. Going crazy. Yeah. And tens of thousands of them would want to follow him. They, they didn't even remember the family or anything. They just wanted to go where he's going. And he says, no, stay here and chant the holy names of the Lord. And go back to your villages, go back to your towns, and be guru. Save the people. Harinam, 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 Eva, Keva, Long, Kalo, and Esteva, and Esteva, and Esteva, Gatiranyata. The names of Hari, the names of the Supreme Person. Distribute them to the people, give them to the people and let them uh, be saved and let them taste the nectar of love for God. This is... Chaitanya goes on in his second verse. He says, O oh my Lord, your holy name alone can render all benediction to the living beings. And thus you have hundreds and millions of names like Krishna, Govinda, Allah, so many names. Hundreds and millions of names. In these transcendental names, you have invested all your transcendental energies. You've invested all your transcendental energies. They're not even, there's not even any hard and fast rules for chanting your holy names. Oh my Lord, out of your kindness, you enable us to easily approach you by chanting your holy names. Is you're so kind, you enable us to easily approach you by chanting your holy names. But unfortunate as I am, I have no attraction for them because I am so contaminated. This is 
Chaitanya's attitude. The names of God are not separate from Him. Therefore, they are as powerful as Him. Chaitanya appears and the Holy Name appears. Chaitanya and the Holy Name are non-different. Lord Chaitanya and the names of uh, the Supreme Person, non-different. So the names of the Supreme Lord are being uh, given to us by the Supreme Lord Himself. And there's no hard and fast rules for chanting His holy names. And if we chant the holy names of the Supreme Lord, we will more and more uh, become cleansed of sinful reactions and more and more begin to taste the nectar of love for the Supreme Person. This is our natural condition. This is natural. So we offer all our respects to Lord Chaitanya, who so kindly appeared some 500 years ago in order to uh, save us by uh, inaugurating this uh, movement centered on chanting of the names of the Supreme Person. It's completely non-sectarian. We don't say that Allah is the only name of God. We don't say that Jehovah is the only name of God. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not teach sectarianism. He did not say Krishna is the only name of God or Gopala is the only name of God. He says, oh my Lord, you have hundreds and millions of names. And each and every one of your holy names is invested with all your power. We should not uh, lose this opportunity, waste this opportunity that Chaitanya is giving us. Lord Jesus Christ is telling us, love the Supreme Father with all your heart, all your mind, your entire being. And do His will. Love Him. And in the Bhagavad Gita, the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna is saying, love me. And Chaitanya is coming and saying, here's how you can come to that platform of love. Here's how you can come to the platform where you are actually loving the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Here's how. Chant the holy names of the Lord. Chant the holy names, chant the holy names, chant the holy names. Haribo. Haribo means chant the holy names of God. Haribo. Thank you very much. Haribo! Haribo! Are you all there?
Jai Jai Guru De 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 Jai Guru De Jai Jai Guru De Jai Jai Guru De Jai Jai Guru De Jai Jai
Yeah, I 
So um, I'd like to introduce you to these guys. I'm based to have Gopal. On drums we have Govinda. On guitar and vocals we have Rama. On harmonium we have Madonna. And on electric guitar we have Mohana. If you believe that, you'll believe anything. <laughs> no, it is Gopal and Govinda. This is Radhika, this is Jiva and Mali. So. And this is my brother, Yadunandana. And there was also Nadia, Nadia before, yeah. Yeah, and Nadia earlier. But that name didn't fit in with the mantra, so I... <laughs> um, I'm a Mike Hogg, but I just wanted to thank these guys, and of course, we'll have them back, yeah? Sometime. And um, I've heard it on good authority, if all goes well, we'll have Prahlad Das back in April as well, some Sunday. So keep an eye open for that. That's what we're looking forward to. So just a couple of announcements. That's why I'm up here. Um, so there will be Kirtan on Wednesday with Yadunandana and these guys. There will be no Kirtan on Easter Friday. There will be no Kirtan on Easter Sunday. But there will be Kirtan back again on Wednesday with these guys and then on as normal for that. I'm actually not sure. There may be a few yoga programs on over the weekend. I'm really not sure. I cannot remember. But the Kirtans, no Friday, no Sunday Kirtan over Easter. Um, then back as normal. I think that was it. And food, and if you can help with the donation, and if you can help stay back and pack up, that's also very much appreciated. And uh, for those of my regulars, uh, Wednesday I have a meditation here at 10.15, for those who'd like to come. On Mondays with our Wayno. What time's yours? Seven. Seven. Our other guitar player from Australia is here at seven for Deep Peace. Yeah. Yeah, a.m. Mine's at 10 p.m. No, that, no, these are all mine's in the morning, his in the afternoon. So, yeah, that, that's just a little bit of a plan. Coming up, so not this Sunday, obviously we're not here, but the following Sunday we have a good friend of ours. Uh, his name is Acharya Das. Some of you may know him. Um, he'll be here. He's uh, coming over from New Zealand and we'll be doing some talks and things. So he'll be speaking here. So not this coming Sunday but the, like next week, but the week after, whatever date that is, he's speaking on the topic of radical forgiveness, the path to, to uh, freedom and happiness. And I can assure you, it's absolutely, I don't miss. So is that clear which Sunday it is? Not Easter Sunday, but the Sunday following here, our friend Achari Das will be speaking on that idea, radical forgiveness, the path to freedom and happiness. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and one other thing. Sometime later in the year, um, we're having a bonfire kirtan. So some of you who have been around a little while are aware of that, out at our uh, Nadia Retreat Centre, our friends Surat and Malada have uh, opened up again. Since COVID and all that, we didn't do it. But we're coming back to a, uh, so Saturday night, it's going to be a kirtan in this beautiful um, Nadia Retreat Center out of Palambal and we're going to have kirtan and we're going to have hot soup and chai and all of those kind of things. So do we have any of the flyers here? There are some flyers with both of them on, I think. They're on, they're on the desk? Not for the bonfire. Okay. It's in May. There you go. Keep an eye out anyway. Thank you. Howdy bowl. Krishna.